In this next video, we will not be talking about mobile comms and we will not be talking about how to build off-grid computers. We will be talking about how to build your very own budget van pack bag. So stick around. I wonder if it's too foggy. <laughs> Do we need to let it clear out? Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Jake with GridBase, and today I wanted to talk to you about man pack radios, specifically affordable Amazon buyable man pack radios. Obviously, you have military grade units that uh, are encrypted and you know are using HF frequencies, and so they talk miles and miles and miles. More what I'm talking about is a civilian style man pack bag. So stay tuned and let's talk about how to build a budget man pack bag. I want to give a second to thank our sponsors. First of all, Avon Protection. Avon Protection makes gas masks and filters that are really the highest quality you could possibly get. I have tried alternatives and they don't fit as well. They don't have the same types of ratings and they're overall not as quality. And plus, they're not used by tier one operators here in the United States. So if you're looking for the best protection you can possibly get from seaburn threats, tear gas and riot gas, or maybe even train derailments with oil burning in your area, whatever types of chaotic situations are happening these days, if you're looking for protection from seaburn threats, look no further than Avon Protection. And you can use our code GRIDBASE10 to go get yourself 10% off of their products. Now, second of all, I wanted to thank our sponsors, ZBM2 Industries. ZBM2 Industries is a boutique antenna manufacturer that makes the highest quality antennas you could possibly buy. Now, you might be familiar with small radios like this that come with cheap rubber duck antennas such as this. These are garbage. You do not want to use those. They will not work well for you. Go and get you a nice antenna. This is perhaps the best upgrade you can do to any radio, but especially those budget radios that tend to have scratchy frequencies. So go ahead and go over there and use GridBase 10 to get you 10% off of your own antenna. He makes antennas for vehicles, handhelds, run the gamut. The guy makes it. Derek is awesome over there. So please go check out ZBM2 Industries. Now with sponsors out of the way, I wanted to talk about civilian man pack bags. Now the benefit of a man pack bag, as I see it, is that you have more power than you would in a handheld radio. Now handheld radios typically only put out between five and eight watts. That is their maximum wattage. And if you've been following along on Instagram or over on Patreon or perhaps some of our older YouTube videos, you know that the best way to overcome terrain obstacles or building obstacles as it pertains to getting more range with your radio is power. So a man pack bag gives you the opportunity to have 50 watts, 25 watts. It gives you a much higher wattage level than you normally would on a small handheld radio. The problem with these mobile radios or man pack radios is that they have to be powered by an external power supply. Typically these are connected to vehicles so you've got a direct 12 volt power supply there uh, but in the case of a man pack bag you actually have something a little different which is an onboard battery. Guys, this is, I think, about $120 or so. This is a 12-volt, 10-amp lithium-ion rechargeable battery. And you will need something like this to power a man pack radio. Now, you don't necessarily have to use lithium, although I recommend it. Now, there's one main reason why I recommend lithium batteries. On lead-acid batteries, the the charge of the battery is such that it slowly tapers off over the life of the battery. However, lithium ion batteries, they stay at their best optimal voltage until right at the very end and then they simply die out. So what that means for radio is that you're going to get the best possible usage out of this battery throughout the life of the battery until you need to recharge it, whereas on a lead acid battery it may slowly trickle down over time and you may not notice it because you may not have a power meter hooked up to it, but you will notice it later on when your radio isn't getting the same type of range that you were expecting it to get whenever the battery had a full charge. So this is the first stop for your mobile man pack radio. You need a small lithium ion battery. Um, and just to give you a kind of example on what kind of life this has on it, I have had this bag built and I've been using it for over a month now and I haven't had to recharge it. Now that being said, I haven't transmitted a lot. Transmitting is where you suck the power out of the battery. I've mostly been receiving with it, um, but this isn't a case where you have to charge it every night or anything by any means, unless perhaps you were using it all day long, which I don't suspect, uh, suspect anybody to be doing. So go ahead and start out building your man pack bag by going and getting a lithium small little battery like this. 
Now, before we talk about the radio itself, I want to talk a little bit about the bag to put it in. Of course, you could put this in a big, large backpack or something else, but it is nice to have everything kind of self-contained in its own dedicated bag. For this particular case, I have found this Cast King uh, fishing backpack that's meant for holding lures and rods and reels and things like that, but it happens to lend itself perfectly for radio. Now I have made one mod here, which is that I punched a hole on the side so that I could bring a coax out to connect an antenna to, and I will show you how to do that momentarily. But uh, I did cut a little hole there. But aside from that, I have made no serious modifications to this bag. Now one of the things that I like about it, aside from its you know unique form factor and that it fits the radio really well, is that it has this little pouch for you to put maybe some different connectors um, or SD cards or you know all kinds of random little things that you may need. You can also, in the top here, put your handheld. If you have a little handheld attachment that goes onto your radio, you can store that in there. Um, in this case, I've got a little case for a Yaesu radio that I have that's taken that spot. And of course, down here in this compartment is a big, large spot for the battery. And I have also cut a hole in there to bring these connectors out here to connect the battery up to. So, you know, just some things that you want to look for in a small bag for your man pack radio is A, something that's affordable. You know, you don't have to go get some crazy radio bag um, that costs a fortune. I think this bag cost me around $30. And something like this is going to work really well for you. I'm not saying that it's the highest quality. I'm not saying that it's not made in China. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm just saying that the, the scope of this video is that we are talking about an affordable man pack bag. And this is that. Moving on now to talk about the radio. This particular radio is a TYT TH9800, and it is a clone of an old Yaesu radio that basically looked and performed the same. Uh, we are at war, y'all. There are jets flying over our facility right now. This is why we're talking about this kind of stuff so that you can get prepared. We'll come back after a short break once these jets get finished flying over our building. Now this particular radio I have chosen because it is what is known as a quad band radio, meaning that it does two meter, 70 centimeter, some 50 megahertz and some 10 meter HF stuff. So it really is, uh, you know, for a man pack bag, you wanna pack a bunch of capability into a small form factor and this radio does it. Um, not to mention it's only around $200 depending on when you buy it and where you buy it, but you can find these on Amazon and I do have a list in the link down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post another video. Moving on to talk about this radio and why I chose it though, it is a 50 watt radio. So um, this is a lot more power than a traditional handheld and it's really easy to use, it's really easy to program, it is Chirp programmable, which if you don't know, Chirp is a software that you can use to easily program radios. And not only that, it may have a little Easter egg that allows you to transmit and receive GMRS signals on it. So um, in the case of an emergency, if you were needing to use it for GMRS stuff, you potentially could do that as well. Now, obviously, the radio does not come with this fancy cage on it. This cage is provided by a company called Armalock. Now, Armalock makes all kinds of really unique cages for all kinds of really unique radios, and uh, they're really the only ones out there doing it. And if there is anyone else doing it, I'm confident that they are not doing it as well as Armalock is. They're really easy to install, just two screws on the side, and it adds a huge layer of protection to these kinds of radios when you're pulling them in and out of bags, setting your bag down on the ground, whatever the case may be, um, having an Armalock cage is kind of essential to having a good man pack radio. Not to mention, it also helps take up space in the bag so that the radio sits in it nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook this radio up in the bag, and then we will see if we can get a, uh, a, a contact with it. Um, but before I leave you, I did want to mention this one thing. If you'll pull in right here, this is an adapter. This is a UHF to BNC adapter. And you will need one of these if you're going to be using coax to easily connect and disconnect it and route cables in the back. So it may be worth your while to go and purchase some assorted connectors. I think I have some around here somewhere. Ah, yes. As you can see, I am not short of connectors. And you can buy numerous kinds uh, that will allow you to do numerous different things, such as these little 90 degree elbows. Anyway, all kinds of stuff. It will be worth your time to just get a pack of some different types of connectors. You'll probably end up needing them. Let's go ahead and move on to putting this in the bag and showing you how I use it.
So guys, as you can see, assembling one of these bags is fairly easy. There's not a whole lot that goes into it. I did forget to mention that one of the things I like about these fishing bags is that they usually have these little spots for reel holders that end up being really unique spots to put your antenna so that it stays up and out of the way and it's not flopping around. Um, I also did modify mine a little bit by putting a little bit of Velcro on the back of it here. And because the front of this has a little Velcro spot for lures, it just kind of sits right there on the front whenever you need it and you can take it on and take it off. Now, of course, I do already have my radio program, so we will change over to a channel here and see if we can get a contact. We'll be using this to test and make sure that this whole system is functional. Kilo 5, Juliet Alpha Kilo, K5, JAK. Test, 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 K5, JAK. This is K5, JAK testing a man pack bag. All right. As we can see, the system does work. There's no reason that it shouldn't work. Just because it's affordable doesn't mean that it is not working or wouldn't work. This whole system all in is about $350. You're talking about 200-ish for the radio itself, uh, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't know how many, depending on how much you invest in the antenna, a couple of connectors, and then a inexpensive lithium battery. So something like this is tremendous. You can take this and throw it over your shoulder, whenever you go camping. You could also take it and put it in the front seat of your car, right? Maybe you don't want to absolutely dismember your car to put a radio in there all the time. You could put a mag mount antenna on the roof of your car and connect that into your radio here. There are a ton of options for how you could configure something like this, but I do think that it's something that should be in every prepper's go kit uh, because having this type of functionality on the road whenever comms are down is priceless. So thank you very much for watching. As always, you can get more info like this by subscribing to this YouTube channel or going over and checking us out at gridbase.net. That's D-O-T-N-E-T -E on Instagram, TikTok. We're all over the place. Just search gridbase.net and you'll find us. You know, our Patreon subscribers do get a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you are needing help with building something like this, you can go become a Patreon subscriber. And that is an easy way for me to offer you one-on-one -on -one advice for you building out your radio kit. Maybe you want something that's encrypted. Maybe you want something that's more powerful. There's all kinds of things that you might want that are different from what I need. And I'm here to help you with any of those solutions. If you haven't yet, go check out our most recent YouTube video that we did with Dirty Civilian. It was fantastic to go out there and to uh, get to chat with those guys. And we did a whole breakdown on mobile comms and what it looks like to have scanners and radios and all kinds of stuff inside of your vehicle. So if you haven't, go to their channel and check that out. And we do have a book coming out uh, sometime next year. So go to our website and get subscribed to the email list to be notified for whenever the book is going to be coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jake with Grid Base, and we'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.